Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming in today. Before we start, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything I've done for us, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with the Sabbath day. Please continue to bless us, God has protected us. Bless the youth ministry, oh Lord. Bless the youth that is with me today on this panel, Lord. Guide them, protect them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. It is both a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce you all to another episode of Teen Table Talk which is one of our youth ministry segment. And I am your host, Farlene Payong, and joining me today are a few of our youth Shiloh members. Please introduce yourselves. Kayla Rosola Bruce. Um, Ashley St. Victor. And Peterson Picard. So in honor of Youth Day, we are going to have an open discussion about the season of change. And the congregation is welcome to join us and answer the questions with us. So the first question I have is, what does the word change mean to you? Kayla, you can start. To me, the word change means to become different or means to become different or make it or make a difference like such as changing your features or making changes to your life for me um, I changed in my tolerance like I used to have I used to be short-tempered but now I'm more patient when things come okay Ashley would you like to add something um, I said something similar I said it's something different that may be happening in your life it, it could be any type of different your personality, maybe the way you may dress. Yeah, something like that. Peter? What change means to me is doing things differently or perceiving yourself differently. Like, say if you want to go on a diet and change your lifestyle or a healthy eating, then that's a change. Okay, so we could all agree that change means to progress into something new, something better, whether it's your weight, whether it's your outfit, your hairstyle, anything. Change can be a good thing, but change could, some people could view change as a bad thing, but change could also be a good thing. So another question I have for you guys is, can you tell us a verse in the Bible that sheds light on the feeling of change? Malachi 3 verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. I chose Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I chose 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone in Christ the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And what, the, what made you guys choose this verse? Like what made you choose the verse? What stood out to you in the verse? Um, I chose this verse because it's talking about how um, God, um, Christ is changing, he's changing the world for the better. The old is gone and the new is here. He's making it better for everyone, his people. Um, I chose this verse because I feel like it really like stands out to show that like God will never leave your side no matter what type of change is happening in your life. I chose this verse because even though we may we make mistakes, the Lord does not change, and so so does we not. I mean, we don't change either. Okay, um, I would like to add on to you guys. I chose Second Timothy verse two, Second Timothy two verse twenty five, which says, "Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts, and they will learn the truth." 
So what I got from this verse is that um, when people bring God into their life, it could be a change of in their faith for, for the better so that they could spread the knowledge of God and within their actions and through their words. So can you name a person in a Bible that experienced a season of change in a positive way? Peterson. A person in the Bible that um, experienced change in a positive way was Saul. Saul was a zealous um, Pharisee who persecuted Christians. He was on his way to Demarcus to persecute more Christians when he was suddenly knocked off his horse and blinded by the light of heaven. Jesus appeared to him and asked why, why was he persecuting, persecute, persecuting him? Um, Saul then became a Christian himself and changed his name to Paul. He became one of the most influ um, influential apostles spreading the gospel throughout the world. Saul's story shows us that God's grace can transform anyone. He sh he's seen God's grace and his power and that changed him for the good. Would anybody else like to add on to that? Can you name a person in the Bible who experienced a season of change in a positive way? Okay. Yes, David. He became, he became his career as an aide at the court of Saul and distinguished himself as a warrior against the Philistines. This then aroused jealousy in Saul, and then he made a plot to kill him. David then fled and became a leader and organizer for a group of refugees and outlaws. His actions showed that he would be invited to be king. Even though he struggled under the law of Saul, Saul under Saul's son, he was then murdered by his courtiers, and David was then titled king of Israel. I chose Peter. I said that um, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, but after the third denial, he heard the rooster crow. He became courageous, defended the disciples, and he was able to remember the Old Testament prophecies slash teachings. He, became, he began witnessing the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and the outcome was that he called people to repentance. Great. Those are great examples. Saul, David, and Peter. Those are great examples. Um, would anybody in the audience would like to add on to a character in the Bible that portrayed a season of change in a positive way. No, okay. So to add on, I would choose the character Ruth because she was a widow who showed her loyalty to Christ and to her mother-in-law and she never let down anybody. Um, Ruth's story teaches us that no matter what happens in our past or how tough our circumstances may be, a little faith can make a, di a big difference. So if you guys want to add on, we have one person. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, I would say Doubting Thomas made a big change, and his encounter with Jesus made that change for him. So. That's the guy who I see. He made a big change. At first, he said, I won't believe until I see it. Then he saw, and then he believed. So it was when he saw Jesus that that encounter made a big change for him. Amen. Amen. Um, sometimes people do need a push to um, see Christ so that they can believe what his miracles can do. And to add on, to move on, can you name a person from the Bible that was struggling with the idea of change in their lives? Yes, Job. Job had flocks, herds, and children, but they were all killed due to Satan having the power to destroy all he had. He couldn't think of anything else but to shave his head and worship on his knees. Even in his prayer, he charged God for taking away what he gave, but he still decided to praise God. Not only that, but Satan covered up Job with skin sores, hoping that he would curse God. His wife kept encouraging him to curse God and to give up and die, but Job refused and accepted his fate. chose David, which okay. she explained earlier. Um, I'll just get to the outcome. Uh, 
David was a king of Israel who was chosen by God, and he was tormented by the jealous king Saul, which, who chased David for many years trying to kill him. But David had opportunities to kill him, but he didn't because his heart was too good. And after some time, King Saul fell on his sword to avoid capture and his battle. So even though David struggled exceedingly with his faith, he, re he never, he didn't remain in that state for long. So, which includes in Psalms, he um, praised God and was always giving him glory. Um, I, um, Abraham was one. He had to leave his country and go live um, in a foreign land that he didn't know. Um, and the change, um, he didn't want to change because he was thinking of the fear of leaving and the fear of living in a different culture, language, and tradition, and the pain of leaving his relatives and his home, his friends, and, um, but it was for the good. And the risk of leaving the security of his home from, for the unknown place God was sending him to. Mm -hmm. um, would anybody like to add on to that? Can you name a person in the Bible who experienced the struggle with the idea of change? So far, um, Job was mentioned, David, and Abraham. Would anybody like to add on? I'll go back to Doubting Thomas because a lot of people don't talk about him. He struggled. Like, he was with Jesus. He saw Jesus. He knew he was resurrected. His best friends told him it was true, but he didn't believe. He really, really struggled until Jesus came back. I, I sometimes think Jesus had to come back just to show him because... He just doubted so much, but there was a big transition in his um, understanding and faith. Yes, and I completely agree with you when it comes to struggling with faith. Sometimes people struggle with believing in God and Jesus because they don't actually see him, but it's a spiritual feeling, and whatever you go through and God shows you through the miracles that things are possible, and that's how people start to gain faith. So I completely agree with you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, another person I would like to add that struggled with the idea of change was Jonah, who was sent to Nineveh, and he was avoiding that for days. And he, it had to come to him getting swallowed by a whale and trapped for three days for him to realize that this was meant for him. Like his ministry, his prophecy was meant for him and him only in that specific time in his life. And sometimes we struggle with the idea of change because we do, we're afraid of change. We're comfortable with where we're at and we don't want to evolve into what we can actually be. So to move on, I would like to ask you guys, are you fearful or are you open to the idea of change? I'm open to going through the season of change because I trust in God and I know what he's doing. Even though it might come off as a negative change, I know it will lead to a positive change because I know it's happening for a reason. It might get worse before it gets better, but it's happening for a cause. I'm both open and fearful. I say fearful first because I'm, I'm being introduced to a new chapter of education in my life, which is college, and that could be pretty nerve-wracking, but I am also open to the outcome that it could have in my future life. Um, I am open to going through change now because change is good. Um, when I was younger, um, I didn't really want to go through change, but I grew out of that, and now I'm open to, um, to go through changes, like going to college for the first time, yeah. That's great. That's great. Our youth want to continue to evolve in their education. So um, a season of change can be difficult, but it could also be a good thing education-wise, 
health-wise, um, friendship-wise, relationship-wise, in many aspects, change can be very important and moving in your life. Um, would anybody like to share if they would like, if they're afraid, not afraid, if they're fearful or open through going to the, of going through a season of change? We talking so much because no one else is talking. I don't want to talk so much. But um, honestly, um, when I hear the word fear and change in a group of people who are trying to be Christian, it's like oxymoronic. Because Christianity allows you to not have fear. So we shouldn't have fear. We may have apprehension or maybe prepare for the future. But fear is never good. Um, like butterflies in your stomach, maybe you get hot and you start perspiring, signs of anxiety. That's not good. You have to learn how to control that. It's just, you have to do it. There's no way around that. Um, but I'll share a story like you guys shared a story because I'm a teacher and I work in schools. Um, I used to work on um, the Grand Tree campus on Bushwick and Grand. Worked there for years, 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 years. Had a great year, my greatest year ever. I was hanging out with the chancellor, the brand new chancellor, the executive superintendents. They told me about all these changes that were going to happen. I will never be as cool as I was in education and as it was this previous school year. So I had to make a decision. Do I stay or do I go? I can go to a better school, get a more work, get paid more money, but it's scary. Now, I know I just said that we shouldn't be scared, but it's scary. It's scary stuff, but, you know, I had to sit down and wait on the Lord. Um, and now I'm going to work in a brand new campus, closer to home, better, better, better. But it's scary because I would rather just sit down and do nothing and spin around in my chair all day. But I can't grow if I do that. And growth is important as, like, you know, because you're human and stuff. And you can't not grow. Thank you for sharing that. And to piggyback off from what you said, I think it's important to know that um, when we live in fear, it's stopping us to grow. And um, the whole point of turning to God is to help, is to ask him to help us overcome those fears and to go through the journey and be faithful towards him so that he can actually help us through the journey. So thank you for sharing that. So was there a time in your life where you guys experienced a season of change and did it impact you in a positive or negative way? Yes, um, it impacted me in a negative way. When I moved to Valley Stream, um, I wasn't too fond of the idea of moving because living somewhere, you get a, going some, I'm sorry, living somewhere, you get attached to places and making friends on top of that is just moving. It's just not something you want. So it was hard to just pack up and go, but it was for a good reason for me and my family. But it also had a negative impact on me because I wasn't really trying to learn anything in school. I didn't really care about my grades and I didn't really want to make friends. Even though they wanted to talk to me, I like, moved like I kept my distance because I didn't want to make new friends I just like I wanted my old friends back but I feel like that that's what that's the negative effect so you feel like, so you feel like the negative effect was you making a change in the environment yeah like new friendship new a new place to live and that's not something you were used to yeah okay um, would any can any of you relate to what Kayla just said uh, yes very much before fifth grade, I had to move to Florida on, um, like without any notice from my mother. And I had to leave my friends and my father back in New York, which was pretty hard because I was really close to them. So I had to adapt to a new environment, a new school, new people around me. And I would say it impacted me negatively because I really missed my father. and. I just hoped that I could see my friends again, and I wish I could have graduated fifth grade in New York, but I guess things happen sometimes. Um, a time that I experienced change was when I graduated from eighth grade, and I was, um, and I would go to freshman year, but the difference is when 
when I was in Brooklyn and I graduated from eighth grade, I would just I would have just went to the high school that's a part of that same school. So I would have known everybody and I would have had like it would have been easy, but I moved to Long Island and I had to go to um ninth grade in a different school, didn't know anybody, and um, a new place. And um, I feel like it changed me positively because um, I ended up liking the school and I ended up finding out what I'm passionate about. Yeah. All of you could relate to each other when it comes to adapting to a new environment, to a new school, a new neighborhood and I think it can be really difficult at a young age um, adapting to a new environment because now you got to start all over but it's also a good thing because you're still young and you have time to progress and learn new things so um, would anybody else like to add on to a time where they were experiencing a season of change and did it impact you in a positive or a negative way yes uh, good morning happy Sabbath everyone Yes, uh, I just want to relate your own church, Shiloh Bilingual SDA Church, to what you just said. Okay, we remember that when we didn't have any building, okay, we were going locations to locations. Every time, you know, we change a place, and then we lost a lot of me uh, so many members. And then it was a, a big deal for Shiloh by Lengo as a church. And then we will, we used to pray a lot that God can give us a place that whenever we get to that location, now it's gonna be, you know, our permanent location. And then it, it used to be a big deal and then it was frustrating for us, okay? We were frustrated at that time, you know, because you, we couldn't, we couldn't stay in a place, you know, to call our own place. But, uh, you know, when time came, and then God blessed, blessed, you know, blessed us with a building. And then now we can say hallelujah, we have our own place. We do not have to go to location, from location to location. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, that's amazing. Um, Sometimes it can be a real, it can be really difficult to adapt to something different, especially when you're losing members. But at the end of the day, what really matters is our relationship with Christ and that Shiloh is actually a church that is giving and loving. And I would like to add on to that because um, I would say my experience of change was actually coming into the church of Shiloh. I felt welcome. I felt like I was at home. So yeah, even though you guys did lose a little bit of members, I am glad that you guys are still strong and still pushing forward. And would anybody like to add an, another example of going through a season of change and did it impact you in a negative or a positive way? So, to move on, if it was possible, would you, what is something that you would like to change in your life or your environment? Ashley. Um, I would like to uh, get a new job, which can help me, help provide like, money to my mother and father, and help them with the situations they're going through right now. Um, I would like a new job environment that's more like me, that's more of my interest. Yeah. Okay, so you would like to adapt to a new um, working environment, something that you're more interested and more passionate in. Yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, Kayla, would you like to add on? I would like to change the way I make decisions because the way I make decisions, I base it on what people think about me. Um, if I want to join a sports team at school and there's these group of people that don't like me, I'm not, I'm not going to join because I'm going to think 
that they're just gonna bring me down in the midst of it. So I just, I feel like I need to change the way people view me and just not care about all, at all. That's good. So we're um, focusing more on you as an individual is important to you than what other people perceive you as. That's really good. Peterson, would you like to add on? Um, I think that I don't, ha I don't have anything to change because I feel like the decisions I've made and um, the trust that I put in God led me to where I am today. So I feel like there was no, there's no really change that needs to be done because everything was set. So you feel like you don't have to learn well, you wouldn't change a thing that already happened in your life because you wouldn't be the person you are today without those experiences. Perfect, okay. Um, would anybody in the audience like to share with us something that you would like to change or if you could possibly change something in your life or your environment, what would it be? So far, Peterson said he wouldn't change a thing. Ashley said she would change her working environment, and Kayla said she would change the way that people perceive her or the feeling that she feels when people judge her. I think for me personally, I agree with Peterson. I probably wouldn't change a thing because I've learned from my past experiences, my past mistakes, and I've grown from it, I've evolved from it, so if I didn't learn from my past, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So I would say that I wouldn't change a thing. But uh, now let me piggyback off of that. The one thing I would change is my patience. I do feel like I rush, I like to rush my process when it comes to school, when it comes to like any aspect. I feel like I'm always rushing. That's one thing I would change. I would live in the moment instead of being less patient. Uh, Shirley would like to add on. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, thank you guys for um, being so bold and just to share and disclose your experience. It's not easy to do that. Um, I really congratulate all of you. Um, as Christian, I feel like there's always room for change. Um, this is something that we do daily um, to evaluate ourselves um, and see what, you know, what could have been done better. I feel like there was, there's always room to be a better person. Um, like for myself, I feel like I didn't have enough um, patience working with kids, but I end up working with children, so God really put me in a place where I can work that patient. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and I still need to work more on that. So I feel like there's always room to, for progress. We can never stop where we are. We have to keep on moving for a higher and higher. Amen. Um, would anybody like to share something that they would like to work on? Or something you would like to change in your life or your environment? Yes, uh, I would like to, ask, to add something too. Because sometimes, you know, when you need to be changed, you don't even see it for yourself. And then somebody can point it out, uh, can point it uh, to you. And then my brothers, or my brother, my sister, you know, you need uh, to fix yourself. You need to do this to do that. It depends, you know, how the person ap approaches you. You know, this is very important. As Christians, we need to be humble, you know, because uh, you're not living only for yourself, all right? And sometimes you might be in a society or you might be in a place, you know, and then you don't even see, you know, how you're reacting, all right? Somebody can say, you know what, the way you do this, you do that, you need to change it. And then which is very important for us because we are, we are one and then we are helping each other. As Christians, as Sister Shirley said, just said, and then yes, there is always room all the time for us to change because no one is perfect. Because it's a battle, we are fighting. 
Okay, we we do not reach the apogee, or we do not reach you know the the level yet, you know, not to uh, not to change, not to uh, need a change in ourselves because every day it's a process, all right, for us. Okay, we need uh, to f to find you know if you are in the right place with God, all right, because no one is perfect is perfect. And then we are all sinners, we need change all the time. All the time we need that change. In the name of the Lord, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Elder. Um, would anybody like to add on to that? Okay, so the Elder said that um, change can be a good thing and it's okay to make some changes in your life because God is always planning ahead. You don't know what's um, ahead of you and you don't know what's set for you in the future only God knows that so it's okay to experience a season of change because at the end of the day it's not really on our terms it's on God's terms and we have to accept that we have to humble ourselves we have to stay faithful look forward and keep keep pushing ahead so thank you for sharing that elder and sister Shirley um as youth members of Shiloh, what changes do you think should be made within our community, since we're speaking about the season of change? Some changes that should be made in this community is that more youth members in the church should volunteer or participate in some church activities, like doing welcome, scripture reading, or um, being involved with the youth, with the youth department. It's not like you have to do it every every Saturday. You could just do it once or twice. But if the church keeps rotating on the same people like every other Sabbath, people might start to think that not a lot of people wanna participate like what the church is doing. So you would like to see pro um, progress in the participation of the youth in the church. Yes. And you would like to see more people, like not the same people on stage. Yes. Okay. Um, Ashley, would you like to add on to that? As a youth member of Shiloh, what changes do you think should be made within our community? Um, I didn't put anything down for this question because I don't believe anything should be changed in, in the community as of right now. Okay, so you actually like everything that you've experienced while being a member in this church? Okay, that's good. I, um, I believe I think that we're we're pretty good. I don't think there's anything that needs to change majorly. I think that we have we can do a little subtle change, but I think that we're like pretty good. All right, that's that's amazing. Shirley, would you like to add on? Yes, thank you guys, and I'm so, once again I'm so proud of of you guys. Um, I feel like um, Shiloh. Um, our children, we are, you guys are able and do things. Um, it is very unfortunate that you get to see the same faces because when we ask other youth to participate, they will say no, they get discouraged. So I feel that it is your turn to speak to those that are afraid. Tell them that if I, you can do it. You know, it, it could be difficult when you're not used to it, but guess what? We are here as adults in the church to give you guys all the support that you need, all the help, because this is your time, okay? This is your church. If you're not bringing new ideas, new I things that you would want us to support you in, it's not going to be done because what we know now, what we knew then, that's not what you guys want to do. Do you understand? So I want you guys to be more open with us. You can trust us. You know, we are like your parents. We love you guys. So whatever ideas that you think that will give you guys the extra support, emotionally, spiritually, um, physically, in all levels of your, you know, development, bring it to us. Share with us. Okay, do not be afraid. After all, we are one family. Don't be afraid. So encourage, empower your, your friends, your family members to come in. Invite them. They're welcome. They're welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, Elder would like to add on. Yes, you know, you are my people, guys, and then I love all this conversation. And then I like when uh, Kayla just said that, you know, to use the young folks more on the pulpit, which is, I really agree with, with her. But one thing I would like to add too, because there's something called consistency in the church. And then we need to know that when you, when you are involved in something, you need that you have to be serious about it. We need to be serious about it. And then look at how, look at how our church is for Sabbath school right now. And then we, is, is it a good thing? Because everybody, we should know that uh, Sabbath, Sabbath is the day of, of, you know, to come and to worship God and then to uh, uh, praise God, right? And there is a time, you know, to come that we put, and then we put, not one person puts the time, and then we vote on it and then to say, okay, you need to come on time to worship the Lord, to all right, most of the time, you know, people, they, they don't even know that there's a Sabbath school in the church. All right, they don't even know that if there is a, you know, a, uh, something called, you know, uh, to study the lesson of the Sabbath school. And then, which is very, um, you know, sad for us, you know, as Christians, as leaders of the church, as members of the church. And then, uh, I kind of disagree with the Peterson when she said, when he says that, you know, we pretty good. Yes, my dear brother, you might be good. I understand because you're always here on time. But some of us, you know, and then they never come on time to, you know, to come and then that we can join together on time to praise the Lord, to do the work of God. And then some of us, when they put us on the pulpit or to do something in the church, we have to wait for, for, for them, you know, we have to wait for them and then to start the service. This is something that we need uh, to change in our church. You know, we need to be serious about the work of God. We need to be consistent about the work of God. Because when we, uh, at, uh, during the weekday, we wake up early on the morning to catch the train, to catch the bus, to go on Bell Park, to go on the highway, not to be late to get to work. But when it, come, when it comes to the church, everybody is busy or everybody is sick and then th but this is one this is one day that you know you can find most of the christians and they've been sick on sabbath but during the weekdays you know everybody is get uh, everybody gets healed all right but we need to change this kind of things as christians you know and then to know when we are doing the work of god we need to be serious about it and then that's how we can uh, uh, change our community when our community sees us we are very serious about the work of god and then they will come too and then that's that's how we can teach the gospel when they see us very serious about about the work of god thank you Thank you, Elder and Sister Shirley, for your advice. And it's great to know that we have people in the church that are willing to motivate us and guide us to um, being more consistent in the work of God and to actually put time into what we want to do when we evolve as the youth in the church. So I would like to thank you, Kayla Peterson and Ashley, for joining us today on Teen Table Talk. And thank you for your insight on the interesting topic of Season of Change. And I hope that God continues to bless you all abundantly in your ministries. And thank you all in the congregation. Thank you, Shiloh, for joining us today on our, on our segment, our youth ministry segment on Teen Table Talk. I hope God continue to bless you all, and I hope you all have a blessed Sabbath.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I know I'm not here in a, I'm not here in a funeral today. All right, we're here to praise our Lord, our Savior. Right, church? Right, church? We praise God, you know, for this uh, beautiful day that he gave us. And then, nous disons, merci parce que nous avons opportunité pour nous capables de la matin, pour nous venir par gloire, honneur à les mêmes seuls qui méritent. Et eh bien, oui, chers frères et sœurs? OK. We need to thank him, you know, for all his goodness toward us. And I know for sure, if it was not for God, none of us, none of us will be here today. And uh, we just, uh, you know, this is the part for lay ministry and then the director is here. And then I just want to thank you, you know, for being here. And uh, before we, we let the director to come forward, I'm going to ask you please uh, to bow your head as we're going to have a word of prayer. All right, let us bow our head. Eternal God, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here. We praise and glorify your name, O oh God, for what you have done for us. Please may you forgive us for all our sins. As we are about to hear your word from our dear director, Ben Leconte, O oh God, we ask you please to inspire him and may you be with him. Bless all of us, O oh God, and those who are on the way to come, may you be with them, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Shiloh. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. This is the lay ministry portion, and at this time, we are going to discuss lay ministry. And by lay ministry, that's going out, spreading God's word, telling someone about Jesus. Last night, I had a Vesper uh, that... Uh, I was hosting in New, in New Jersey, and I was as I was hosting this Vesper, uh, every Friday night I do it with these young people, and as I'm doing the Vesper, the young people had a question for me, and they said, Ben, I went to this house party, and you know, they were barbecuing and grilling in the backyard, and we waited for the food, and they said, the food's coming, and the rice, is he the rice is finished, all they have is the meat. So they're making the meat, they're cooking the meat, and they said, before we get the meat, we need sodas and drinks. So someone wants to get the juice and soda, and the guys are waiting, and these are the guys that were at the barbecue, and they're telling me what happened, and they said, Ben, after two hours, we finally was able to eat. And when the food came out, it was pork, and we waited all this time to eat, watching them season it from afar, and when it finally came, it was pork. They asked us, why can't we eat? You waited so long, why can't you eat? And they said that they're SDA and they don't really wanna get into it, it's a long story, we don't wanna ruin the mood. And I spoke to them last night and I told them, Every believer in Christ, everyone who, that believes in Christ, it's our job to tell someone about God. And God allows us to have a moment, a window, where he opens it up for us to say something about him. I told them last night, that was their window. When, they're ask, when they ask you, why can't you eat pork? That's your window to tell someone about God. Explain to them, because they know the cool you, they don't know the you that, what's the word? That you have a belief that you're determined and you, you have a drive and a passion for. They don't know that side of you. A lot of us, we go to work, we go to school, we have friends, we go to barbecues and we go to events and people know us as the funny, cool, quiet, nonchalant, whatever type of person, but they don't know the, the servant of God. They don't know that you're here worshiping. And some do know that you're worshiping, but they've never seen you worship. 
some of us, if we would have our friends from school work or friends from wherever, just stand right here and watch us as we're worshiping, they'll be shocked because they didn't know that we had this passion in us. And they don't know we have this passion because we're not talking about Jesus. We're not going. The moments that we have, the windows of opportunity that we have, we, we're not there to, to share Jesus with them. So today, my uh, reminder for everyone here is to not miss your window of opportunity. Don't miss your window at work where your supervisor says, hey, why don't you ever do overtime on Saturday? There's no overtime the whole week. <laughs> That's how the devil works, right? There's no overtime the whole week. But Friday night and Saturday morning, there's overtime for everybody. Why don't you ever do overtime? That's your window of opportunity to tell them why. Tell them who you are. Tell them what you believe in. And tell them what you're passionate about. And if you think that it's you're imposing yourself on other people, remember, in the workplace, at school, in society, a lot of times people say things about Christians and we sit and we don't say anything. And we just take it and we stay quiet. But someone here, if, he, if, 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 if I had someone stand next to me that was a homosexual, uh, that was into men or women, and you would offend them, everybody would know about it. They would not let you step on them, but they'll step on you. So us as Christians, it's our job. When someone says anything that doesn't align with our spirit, we need to speak up. Because if at the workplace, at school, or at our social setting, everybody else is respected, our belief should be respected also. This is my reminder to you guys to not miss your window of opportunity to tell someone about Jesus and also to stand up for Jesus when you hear anything that doesn't align with yourself. Always remember, guys, we have one job, and it's to pass it along. Pass on the good word. Tell someone about Jesus, and that will soon uh, speed up his coming. Happy Sabbath. Protect of this service, and may you guide it. Whatever desires we had in our hearts to do certain things and say certain things. May you erase it. May you speak and move. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you. Always be with us. Always protect us. Always guide us. Have mercy on us. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
praise the Lord. Come on, somebody you ought to praise the Lord this morning. You ought to give God an awesome praise. God looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs this morning and we needed to be in his presence. So there is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Amen. We ask the congregation to please rise, call to worship. Psalms 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all the judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heavens. He also exalted the horns of his people. The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Shiloh, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord. Our God is worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We ought to lift him up this morning. He is excellent. He is magnificent. He is a worthy of our worship this morning. Father, oh God, we are in your presence. We've acknowledged that we have fallen short, but we thank you for grace this morning. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. There is nobody like you. There is nobody greater than you. For this, oh God, we humbly bow ourselves. And we come in your presence with the angels. And Father, as they cry holy, we cry worthy. As they cry holy, Father, we cry the tears of joy for we've been redeemed bless those who are home bless those who are in this place in Jesus name amen, amen. from the highest of heights to the depths of the sea creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature is unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. 
You are amazing, God. Oh, powerful, untamable, or oh, struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing, God. From the highest. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations reveal, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall, from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature is unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by. You're an amazing God. You are amazing God. Oh, powerful. Oh, powerful. Oh, oh. Amazing God, you are amazing. Oh, indescribable, indescribable. Oh, oh. uncontainable. You, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. Oh, powerful. Oh, oh, oh. Struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You're an amazing God. You are 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 amazing God. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. For those who know it in French, you can say it in French. For those who know it in English, you can say it in English. Souviens-toi du jour du repos pour le sanctifier. Tu travailleras six jours et tu feras tout ton ouvrage. Mais le septième jour est le jour du repos de l'éternel ton Dieu. Tu ne feras aucun ouvrage, ni toi, ni ton fils, ni ta fille, ni ton serviteur, ni ta servante, ni ton bétail, ni l'étranger qui est dans tes portes. Car en six jours, l'Éternel a fait les cieux, la terre, la mer et tout ce qui est contenu, et il s'est reposé le septième jour. C'est pourquoi l'Éternel a béni le jour du repos et l'a sanctifié. Alléluia. Amen. Amen. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happening in your name. As I lift my voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Come on, at the center of it all. At the center of it all. It's 
it's you, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Oh, it's you that I see. At the center of it all. At the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Come on, we're gonna say it again. At the center of it all. At, At the, the center, center of it all, all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, Lord, it's your hands that I see moving. It's your hands that I see healing. It's your hands that I see. Abba, Father, we declare today that you are amazing, that there's no one like you. There's none before you, God. You are indescribable. You are un un uncomparable, God. Today, we have come before you to worship you, God, for who you are, God. We praise you for the great things you've done for us. We magnify your glorious name because we are waiting, God. We are waiting for you to do something for us today. There is somebody who's in need of healing. Please come on down with the beautiful balm of Gilead, Father God. There is somebody who needs deliverance, God. Say a word. Say something and we may be here father god please shift this atmosphere as you have already started god please come on by here at shiloh the house of tranquility god the house of gift that you have given to us may we come out here healed and better than ever in jesus name we pray Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Okay. So, um, welcome to Shiloh Bilingual's Youth Day. We appreciate everyone who is supporting us today for Shiloh's Youth Day. Youth Day is a day that we try to expose what our youth feels in their own personal relationships with God. We try our best to be honest in our personal experiences, hoping to reach one, at least one person, preventing them from taking the painful routes of life if possible. Regardless of where you are with your journey with God, we continue to support one another through the highs and the lows in life. We also pray for each other without one another knowing and reach out when we feel that someone is off or has been missing from church for too long. Sometimes we learn lessons to Bible stories that we thought that we knew backwards and forwards and thought could teach us nothing further. In the end, we learned that no one has all the answers and instead we are all searching for the truth together. No one's too young or too old to add to the truth of God or the truths that they find in God. Lastly, I leave you with this. Always hold on to God through the good and the bad times. When we look at Bible characters like Joseph, Noah, and Moses, they went through challenges of being falsely accused, laughed at and or mocked, for obeying God's directions. God was always with them, although it didn't feel like it. God just required that they wait, and eventually everyone witnessed the masterpiece he made out of their lives. I believe God is going to make a masterpiece out of our lives too. We only need to give it time, and we will be able to taste and see that God has and always will be great to his people. Happy Sabbath, church.
Can we say amen again, church? Yeah. I don't understand. Today is a youth day, and then it seems like, you know, it's an uh, old people's day. Huh? I don't really feel the church. Uh, where are my young people? What happened? Huh? What happened? It's not an old people day today. All right, even though I'm old. Okay, and then I just want you, please, you know, to give all your best to God, to the Lord, my friends. All right? This is very important. When you're watching uh, sports and then you are very strong and then to cheer your teams, all right? When you're dancing, I, can, I, I saw you some, some of you, you know, and then you dance very well. And then when you're in the church, what happens? Okay, God doesn't deserve uh, his praise. Oh, yes, God deserves his praise, my friends. And then thank you, Sister Loni, for this wonderful welcome. May the Lord continue to bless you. God is the best all the time. Oh, yes, my God is here. You know, I don't have to be afraid of anybody. Uh, I don't have to be afraid of the devil. The devil is not going to intimidate me to praise him. Because when God is blessing me, nobody is around. And I do not know about you because my God is great, my friends. I do not know about you, but the way you're sitting in front of me, it seems like God has not done anything for you, my friends. You should be joyful when you come in the place of God, church. You should be joyful. You should be happy. You should be very excited to be here, my friends, because so many people would love to be here, but they can't make it, my friends. You think it's because you're better than those people? I don't think so, unless you just came from heaven this morning, and then you, you know, God just dropped you off here, all right? But I know that there's no one like this here this morning. My friends, my brothers and sisters, uh, we need to understand that the goodness of God. God has been good to us. We need to show God that, you know, you are very excited to be here. Let me hear you. God is the best all the time. Oh, yes, he's the best. Uh, if I can say it by myself, I will stand here by myself to say God is the best because I know my God is a great God. I know what he has done for me. I know what he has done for me when I was in Haiti, and I, wo I know what he has done for me when I came here, and I know what he's doing for me when I'm being here right now today. And then I'm here to let you know, my friends, do not let the devil intimidate you to praise your God. And then sometimes people are looking at you when you're saying God is the best, when you're saying praise the Lord. You know, this is the work of the devil. Don't listen. Don't look at them. I'm telling you, be excited, you know, to praise your Lord and your Savior. All right? Indeed, we are so excited to be here in the house of the Lord. And we praise God for this wonderful Sabbath. And we praise God for, for putting this day for us that we can rejoice together, my friends. All right, please, I know the bills are killing us, and the bills are killing me too. Don't you think the bill is not killing me? I don't care. You know, I know my God is great, and then I will survive with my God, with my Savior. All right, please, uh, let us all enjoy in the day of the Lord that we can worship him in truth, my friends. On behalf of the pastoral staff, I would like to welcome you and thank you for being here. And then I would like to welcome a few people here because we have no time to welcome everybody. But there are two people I would like to welcome them here. And then c'est un plaisir pour moi aujourd'hui à pour moi dire sister Anita Laroche bienvenue. All right, c'est c'est uh, maman pasteur ma, madame pasteur Lagudel. Okay, nous sentis nous contents que vous avec nous là sister Anita. Ok, que bon Dieu bénisse et on va réjouir avec nous jeudi à dans Chilo. Ok, non pas cette semaine. Jeudi à dans Chilo. Jeudi à l'église à les Chilo et vous pouvez voir comment que nous louer l'Éternel. Ok, sister Anita, que bon Dieu bénisse. And then we. Ok, ok, sister Anita, salut tout le monde. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Can we say Amen, church? Come on, si sister Anita, c'est uh, les salut. Nous faisons dire Amen. Okay, okay. Merci beaucoup, Sister Anita. And then we need to say a uh, 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 special greeting to our dear sister, uh, Marie-Claire Payan. Sister Marie-Claire Payan, we, indeed, we are so excited to see you among us. Thank you for being here. And then you give us uh, two wonderful assets here at Shiloh, Sister Farlin and Sister Carla. I'm telling you, we are so proud of them, Sister uh, Marie-Claire. If you have uh, more, and then bring them, take them uh, uh, to us, please, all right? T praise the Lord. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Uh, we just want to thank you for passing by. And those who are here, and then we just want to thank them. And then we, are, uh, we have... Uh, uh, 
uh, Bastian's family, all right? They are here with us, all right? Sister Angelina, Sister uh, Annabella, all right? And then well, the rest of them, Sister Rose, you didn't give them, you gave, uh, give me the name, all right? Huh? Endora, and, and Agent, right? Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, we, are wel we welcome you for being here. Thank you for, for being here at Shiloh Bilingual SDA Church. All right, uh, there is a preacher in the house for today. I don't want to take too long because at Shiloh, they don't like me when I'm talking a lot because, you know, I talk too much. But uh, we have a preacher. Before, you know, we hear the word of the Lord and then we just want to uh, wish happy birthday to those people here uh, at Shiloh, but it's only one person who's celebrating today. This is our dear brother Clifford Pierre Louis Jr., but he's not with us, but I know he's in Georgia, and then he might be uh, uh, listening to us at this moment. We just want to say to our dear brother Clifford Pierre Louis Jr., happy birthday. Shiloh loves you. May the Lord continue to bless you, my dear friend. All right. And a few announcements we have for today, as usual. Remember that every... Sunday night, we have a men, men uh, Wednesday, uh, Sunday night prayer with our men. Please, if you want to participate with us, make plan that you can be with us. And then every Sunday night, we start at 8 p.m. and then until 9 p.m., only one hour, all right? Please make plan that you can pray with us. And Wednesday night prayer meeting also, my friends, we've been having a wonderful Wednesday, we've been having, having wonderful Wednesday night prayer meetings. My friend, we've been studying the Bible, and then I know we have a great speaker, a great elder who's teaching us uh, Wednesday night after Wednesday night. Please make plan that you can be there. We start at 8 p.m., all right? And then you can see the Zoom, and we are on via Zoom. And then please uh, take note that we can uh, study together on Wednesday night prayer meeting. And I think that's it for today. My friends, my brothers and sisters, please do not let the praise team open your mouth to praise God, all right? When God is blessing you, the praise team is not around, okay? Let us praise, let us glorify the name of the Lord for what he has done for us. At this moment, I would like to invite you please to stand as we are going to sing our opening song with our dear praise team. Thank you, may God bless you, and happy Sabbath. Thank you, and may God bless you, and happy Sabbath. Yeah, I don't understand this church. We are going to open our song to the song book to number 100. I mean, so sorry. 462, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fall. Oh, 
submission, holy sacrament. I am my Savior and happy and blessed, watching, waiting, looking above, filled with His good. Sabbath church. We are going to be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he med meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. I don't know how your week went, brothers and sisters, but we serve a great God, Amen. and we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. If you're dealing with something, it's time to pray, and let us pray. Si je am Seigneur, moi par rien. Si je dis à vivant, c'est grâce à vous. Sans vous, Seigneur, moi par rien. Ma blessure. Si 
Sorti en vivant, si sorti en vivant, c'est grâce à vous, c'est grâce, car on grâce, Seigneur, sans vous, c'est moins par rien. Oh, ma bleue, oh, 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for what you have done. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to worship you. Qui te voit nous river devant trône. Et nous t'apprenons même voir ça aller river devant trône pour descendre avec bénédiction. Dear God, we come to you to worship you. Shiloh bilingual in the community, we are before you. Lord, may you accept our, our worship today. May you forgive us for all our sins. And may you help us to work with you in faithfulness. At this time, oh God, we want to lift up before you our children, our young people. Today is their special day. We thank you, God, for granting us the young people with energy, with passion. Lord, may you touch them at this time. And may you make a way for them where there seems to be no way. They need your presence more than ever. They need your presence at school, at home, church, in the street, wherever they go. Be with them, oh God. Guide them. Strengthen them. The children, may they continue growing in wisdom and in, in knowledge, stature before you and man. The parents, they need work. They need a job. Give them something to do so that they can feed their family. They can take care of their family, oh God. The church leaders are in your hands as well. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever, oh God. Without you, we are nothing. But with you, we are somebody. We are your children, oh God. Father God, the praise team is in your hand as well. Touch them. Heal them. I don't know what they're going through, but you know everything about them. Give them a special gift today. The preacher is young, but he's mature in you. May you put your hand on him. May you use him to talk to your people. Seigneur éternel, si vous avez là qui malade, si vous avez là qui a souffert, si vous avez là qui a douleur, si vous avez là qui a démangé, si vous avez là qui n'a pas dormi parce que le bon bagage a pensé à lui, les bon qui a sauté, les bon bagage qui fait le troublé. Nous commandons des bagages ça au nom de Jésus nos chassel. Nous t'apprenons qu'au bail petit tuyau la paix du cœur. Nous t'apprenons qu'au bail petit tuyau paix que au besoin. Y ont façon pour foyer au grandi. Seigneur, agis pour nous aujourd'hui. We wanna lift up before you the Golden Year Conference with all the pastors, the churches, the leaders, Atlantic Union as they getting ready for our, our session. In, in, in one week, may the Holy Spirit be upon the leaders, the, the nominating committee, so that they can, they can choose 
the right leaders to lead your church. Lord, bless the general conference, the division, all your people around the world. Hear our prayer, oh God. Visit us again today. Heal us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. and offering. I've been at Shiloh since 1999, and Shiloh, I can say we have come so far. We have our own, our own beautiful sanctuary. I, I, I'm assuming that you guys forgot where we came from. We are able to live stream. We have the equipment, light, we have our communications department working so hard every Sabbath to make sure that everything is coordinated. We have the sound. We have our musicians to create the sound, to make everything whole so we can praise God every Sabbath. The many times I stood here and spoke about tithing, I really didn't put as much emphasis on offering. Without the offering, we wouldn't have the things that I just mentioned, the things that we enjoy. I want to say tithe and as well as provide an offering for the church as it does goes 100% back to our church. There are three ways to give. Um, AdventistGiving.org, there's Cash App at dollar sign Shiloh Bilingual, and you can give right here in the sanctuary. Let us pray. To Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today um, on this hot summer day, but you allowed us to come here. Um, please be with us. Please be with us mentally and financially and allow us to make the right decisions um, financially, oh Lord. Um, for those that are not working, allow them to be able to have a stream of income, oh Lord. Um, provide for us. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
at this time, you know, uh, we're not gonna sing our special song for the Titan of Fern, and then we have a wonderful, beautiful sister who's going to dedicate uh, a special selection to God. Please uh, pay attention. May the Lord be with you. Sister Annabella Bastian. The song I'll be singing is called Most Beautiful, So In Love.
into the storehouse, and that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw op open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough for, to store it. Malachi 3, verse 10. We give thee but thine own what Happy Sabbath, Shiloh. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Shiloh. Amen. At this time, I'm inviting the family of Belle Céline Lecomte to come forward. The mom, Sophie Lecomte, and dad, Benjamin Lecomte, and the extended families as well. Oh, welcome at this time, inviting the praise team to sing a song for us, please. Yes. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen, amen, thank you. The purpose of the ceremony is for the parents or legal guardians to publicly declare that intent to train their child to know the Lord. Sister Bell, you have both, and now you are Bell. I don't know the next one. No next one? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bo and Bell. Where is Bo? Bo. All right. And Bell. <laughs> All right. But today we're going to dedicate Bell to God. Okay. The, the girl, boy. Brothers and sisters, Brother Ben and Sister Sophie are here today with their extended families because they believe in a creator. Children are both a blessing and a challenge. The struggle is real. Waking up at the crack of dawn to, to change diapers. Feeding and burp the baby while everyone else is having sweet dreams. If Belle is sick, forget about getting any kind of sleep. Belle and Bo, you know. <laughs> yes, you know. But dedication of children to God was practiced in biblical times and is practiced today in many churches. Anna dedicated her child Samuel to God and the service uh, of, of, his of his house. And Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. 
to present him to the Lord. It is with great joy that we're going to dedicate Bell to God. And we are very happy to welcome a new member, a child of bilingual. Amen. Amen. Let me ask just two questions. The first question is for the parents. Do you promise, as stated in Proverbs 22, verse 6, to train up Belle in the way she should go, and when she's old, she will not depart from it? Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 For the congregation now, do you promise to pray? to support, encourage, and share any resources they may need. Amen, amen. 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 Say amen again, church. Amen. amen, amen. Praise God. Let us pray. I'm inviting the, the elders to join me as we're going to pray for Bell. Let us kneel down, please, to pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God. A new child, Belle LeConte. We thank you for giving us first Beau, a son. Now we are so excited to give Belle back to you. Lord, may you bless her. May you touch her. May you bless her parents. May you make a way for them where there seems to be no way. We know that the struggle is real, but with you, everything is possible. Lord, give them everything they need, the resources they need to grow the, the children, especially Belle and wisdom and stature before you and man. Lord, may you provide everything for her. May you bless all the children around the world, the children in Shiloh Bilingual. Lord, may you visit them as well. Those who are sick, may you touch them. May you heal them. Those who are struggling with something, may you give them testimonies. Lord, open the, the, the doors of heaven for us today and give us joy, give us peace, Give, give us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm inviting the church clerk to come forward to read the, the certificate. It is indeed an honor to welcome our newest member, Belle. Yeah. You all know that children are such a blessing from God. We want to present Belle with this beautiful gift. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> right. Baby dedication certificate. This certifies that Belle Celine Lecomte was dedicated to the Lord at Shiloh Bilingual French Seventh-day Adventist Church, Brooklyn, New York, on the sixth day of August, 2022. Amen. 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 Congratulations, everyone. May God bless you.
We're inviting Sister Gina for the children's corner, please. Trust me, it's okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, boys and girls. Good afternoon. Are you guys ready for today's story? Okay, I want you to pay close attention, okay? I have a good one for you today. Thank you. God's story, the fruit of the Spirit. So part of God's story is about the fruit of the Spirit. And it goes like this. A guy named Paul wrote a letter to a group of people who were trying to follow Jesus, but they weren't treating each other the way Jesus would have. They ended up getting into silly arguments, kicking people out of their group for no good reason, and even losing faith in God. In the letter, which we now call the Book of Galatians in the Bible, Paul reminded them to be more like Jesus, more like God, more like the Holy Spirit. Paul said, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. When Paul talked about fruit, he didn't mean people who follow Jesus should look for grapes or pineapples growing from their elbows. Instead, Paul meant that as we grow in our faith, we can let the Holy Spirit transform us to be more like Jesus. That's what Paul meant by fruit. Jesus said that a person who follows God is like a tree growing fruit. Jesus said, every good tree bears good fruit. You can tell each tree by its fruit. You can tell a tree is an apple tree if there are a bunch of apples growing on it. And an apple might taste good, but it's also good for you. It can help your body stay healthy. In the same way, the longer a person follows Jesus, the more they will think, talk, and act like Jesus. That's because they have more fruit. It's good to think, talk, and act like Jesus. And it's also good for us. It can help us stay healthy in our relationships with God and other people. And this fruit is also good for planting faith in others. Just like God has planted seeds of faith in us that can grow and bear fruit, our faith and good works can grow and bear fruit in the lives of people we know. When we tell others about Jesus, when we serve, and when we're generous, it's like one fruit producing many seeds. Now it can take a long time for a tree to grow fruit. It needs a lot of things like sunshine and water and nutrients, but really it's God who makes it all work together. In the same way, the fruit of the spirit grows in our lives if we are working together with God. He can make us more patient and kind, but we can also decide to be more patient and kind. God can give us the ability to have more self-control, but we can also decide to have more self-control. The best example of the fruit of the Spirit was Jesus. Jesus was always faithful, and he showed God's love, patience, and kindness to everyone. And because of him, we can all share in God's joy, peace, and goodness. So when you remember to love other people the way Jesus loves you, that's the fruit of the Spirit. When you feel joy and peace, even when something confusing or sad happens, that's the fruit of the Spirit. When you are kind to people, when you do good, and when you show gentleness, that's the fruit of the Spirit. And when you are faithful to God's ways and have self-control, that's also the fruit of the Spirit. Now, it's not always easy to show love or patience or self-control, but it is always good. Remember Paul's letter? Paul also wrote, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. So when we can do good to everyone, let us do it. 
Paul was basically saying, the more we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, the more we all will become more like Jesus. And that's the story of the fruit of the Spirit. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is good for us. God makes it grow. We have more fruit the more we follow Jesus. And that's a part of God's story. Amen. Now, how many of you all were paying attention? You were? So I have a question for you. Give me, give me five examples of the fruit of the Spirit. You can call it out, yes? You can call it out. Love. Kindness. Patience. Yes, Abby? Okay, anyone else? Self-control. Joy. Now, how many of you want to be filled with the Spirit of God? So I want you not only to hear the story today, but to keep it up here and in here and live by the fruit of the Spirit, okay? And remember that we cannot do it alone. Who can help us do it? God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the story that you've given us. Not just for the young ones, but for the old ones as well, dear God. Father, help us, O oh Lord, to have self-control. To live, Lord, by the fruit of the Spirit. I pray that you may fill us up on a daily basis. That when others see us, they don't see only us, but they see you through us. So that they can be drawn to you as well. Bless the children, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, Shiloh Bilingual. Are you happy to be here today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to welcome everyone. Especially Sister Marie Claire. Sister Marie Claire, I'm so happy to see you. Please say hi to Sister Roselyn and Sister Marie Lude. Yes, the three sisters that I love so, dearly. And, oh, Sister Shilin just left. Okay, Sister Shilin, uh, the pastor of, mm -mm, the wife of a former pastor of the church, Dr. Bartholomew. But Dr. Bartholomew is the actual um, ministerial secretary. Uh, the ministerial secretary is like someone who trains the young pastors for ordination, prepare them for ordination, and advocate for all the pastors, not only Haitians, but all the pastors in the conference. We're so happy to, to see her and all our friends, our visitors, we are so happy to welcome you. Are you happy to, wel to say welcome back to Sister Sophie? Yes. Amen. 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 Yes, Sister Sophie, welcome back. And the whole family members, may God richly bless you. And also, I'm, so, I'm very happy to welcome a man of God, Brother Bevins Dorville. Yes. I hear only one person or two people. Yes, amen, amen. But uh, Dorville is a um, very dedicated young man. I was introduced to him while I was the pastor of Canaan French, uh, SDN Long Island. I knew he was so talented and loved the Lord. He had the ministry where he did Bible study with, with his friends, the young people. Amen. Yeah, we, we used to uh, uh, like lead the praise team together. Yeah, sometimes I lead the praise team. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, but when you're getting old, you need to... Yes, uh, Brother Bevins 
um, humble servant of God and a friend of man, youth leader, relentless worshiper, and who's passionate about the gospel of Christ and serving God's people. He's a certified EMT and holds a Bachelor of, of Science and Public Health. His goal and ministry is to continue to be a vessel and a fisher of mankind. Amen. Say welcome to my dear brother. May God bless you. Amen. amen, amen. But before we hear the man of God, we'd like to say keep praying for Siloe French. At this time, we're having a revival every night. We're over there, and Brother Bervens is with us to lead the praise team as well. <laughs> he's, a busy, he's a busy man. Yeah, and thank you for supporting my ministry as well. May God richly bless you. We're going to welcome the praise team. And right after the praise team, we're going to hear Sister Annabel Annabella Bastien. Um, she's coming back for a second selection. Amen. All right? Amen. Thank you so much. May God bless you. How many people know that God is truly, truly worthy? He is worthy. So come on, just lift up your hand and just sing with us to me. Bienvenue cet esprit. nous la présence où Rempli à puissance où Bienvenue cet esprit, mais nous n'avons présence, plein nous à puissance. Ça encore. Bienvenue cet esprit, mais nous n'en présence sous plein noir puissant sous ville Bienvenue cet Hallelujah, 
It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, Jesus. Oh, be with him on the We're standing here 
only because you made a way. And now we're here. Come on, open your mouth. Looking back on where we've come from. Because of you. Because of you. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up and in you made a way. When our packs were against the world and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here and we're standing only because you made a way. Only because you made a way, say you, you made a way. Lord, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if you were over, it looked like I was stuck, but it looks like I lost you. You made a way, and we're standing here, and we're standing only because you made a way. Cause the world to fall with your power. You perform me, and there is nothing left. That's impossible. That's impossible. And we're standing here only because you, oh, you move mountains. You cause the world to fall.
Jesus, that you're worthy. I acknowledge Jesus. I need no other. Come on, Sabbath, everyone. Um, we're going to play another song for you guys. And there's some history behind this song, so I figured I'd tell you. So a couple of weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I think a week and a half, I'm, sorry, I'm not sure, um, my uncle got sick, and he had trouble breathing, and he went to the hospital. And it turns out that he had a really bad, bad condition in his heart. And so they had to perform major heart surgery. And so we were with him a couple of days in the hospital here and there. And so the, one of the days I went, it was a Sabbath, I went with my guitar and I played for him. And the thing about him is that he loves music and music is like big with him. He plays a lot of instruments and things like that. So he's the one who inspired me to ever pick up guitar. 
because I just started playing guitar recently. And so I played him this song, and when I finished, he said, go practice. <laughs> and he said, come back next week after I'm out of surgery to come pray, to come play for me. And so we went the day that he had surgery, and we were there for hours in the waiting room. And it was really, really like scary, obviously, a dire situation. And when the doctor came out, he spoke to us. He said that my uncle had coded while they were in surgery. And um, they were able to revive him, of course. So, um, so yeah, when, I, when we came back, um, I saw him the days after. And I came back, and I replayed him this song. And it was one of the songs that he enjoyed, so I hope you guys enjoy it. It's called Ocean Square Cathedral. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, an ocean sea, my faith will stay.
All right, church. Uh, we know we're going to have uh, our message with the men of God. But there's something just came up here. And then somebody was here. And then she, a family member, she, she just took uh, her mother-in-law in ICU right now, but she asked Shiloh for a word of prayer. All right? And then as we all know, more prayer, more power. You know, God is able. There is nothing that God cannot do. All right? This is very important to pray for our people when they are in trouble. And we know our God is alive. He can do marvelous things. Right, church? And then uh, we... Before the, we hear the word of God, we're going to have a word of prayer. And we would like uh, our dear Christine to sing number 99 for us, the first and the last verse. And then after that, we will have a word of prayer for that sister who just went to ICU right now. In a dismay, whatever be God will take care of you. He may first wait in love of us. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. Sister Margaret, we would like everyone to pray. As we all know, more prayer, more power. And those who can kneel, you can kneel down. And as we are going to pray, pray in your heart as well. Eternal God, our Redeemer, our Savior, there is no one like you, O Lord. You deserve to be praised, to be glorified every day. We thank you so much, O oh God, for allowing us to be here, that we have a God we can praise and glorify. Lord, we know for sure you are here among us. You never forsake us. You are the only God who can create possibility and impossibility for your children. And today we come before your throne, O oh God, with our tears before you, O oh Lord. We are begging you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to hear our petitions, to, to hear our requests at this moment, O oh God. Lord, please, may you forgive us for all our sins. We know we do not deserve your healing. We do not deserve your blessings, O oh God. But because of your mercy, we are asking you, please, my God, my Savior, have mercy upon your children, O oh God. We need you among us at this moment. We need your touch. We need your presence. And we know when you are beside us, everything must be all right in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, we do not come here to show off. We do not come here to show people that we know how to pray better than the others. But we come because we are in trouble right now, O oh God. And I know you are the greatest doctor. There is nothing that you cannot do, O oh Lord. And you know better than the, than the doctors that are in the hospital at this moment, O oh God. Lord, we would like to lift up our dear sister Margaret before you. And you know her better than us, O oh God. You know what's going on right now. We do not know anything because you, we know you are omniscient and omnipotent, O oh God. 
You know everything and you can do everything. Lord, we are asking you. We claim uh, her life, O oh God, at this moment. We are asking you in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, let her feel your touch, your hands right now. Because there is nothing that you cannot do. We believe in you, O oh Lord. You have done it in the past. You can do it again, O oh God. Please have mercy for your daughter at this moment. And I know the family is crying. The family is in trouble. The family is very sad, O oh God. And I know, O oh Lord, you will give them victory, O oh Lord. And we believe in our, in our victorious God. Lord, please have mercy upon the family. And thank you for being our Savior. We are so excited. We are so happy because we have a Savior who can do everything. And we do not have to pay any bills to call upon him. And we pray and then he will come and to save us, to help us. Lord, please visit her at this moment. And let us hear good news in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe in you and we know for sure, oh Lord, you are already at her bed. And then you are doing your thing, oh God. Thank you so much. We praise your name in advance because we know our God never fails us. Lord, please bless us. Bless those who are sick at this moment. Those who are at home also. We put them into your hands, oh God. And thank you for this moment. And help us, oh God, to hear your main servant who is going to deliver your word today. And may your word be a blessed word for us, oh God. Thank you for everything we pray. Not because we are better than the others. We pray you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody. If you know that your God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or even ask for, if you know that God has been good, let me talk to somebody today who God has been good for um, throughout the week. You come in here today to worship the name of our God because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 If you know that God is able to hear Sister Magar, come on, say amen. Come on, somebody. My musician, help me out. Help me out. Help me out. Help me out. Somebody stand to your feet. Put your hands for God. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. He has done great things. I may not see it, but I know he can do it. I mean, I know what he's about to do, but I know he has great plans for me. For I know the plans that you have for me. Let me tell you something. There's healing in that plan. Uh, there is blessing in that plan. There is a smile for somebody here today in that plan. And I know that my Redeemer, he lives. He lives. He lives. He lives within my heart. He lived yesterday, so today he is alive. Come on, two more. I have no worries about two more for he got two more already. I ain't got no worry about what I'm gonna eat because because through him I'm already fed. So in Jesus' name, there is healing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you may be seated, you may be seated, you may be seated. It's already 12:45. Uh, I don't want to get too excited because I, I gotta let you go home. I gotta let you go home. Um, but I was told I got two hours to preach. So un un unless there's, there's a change in the schedule, um, I don't know. But we, we got a word today. We got a word today. Now, um, allow me to get, to get these ones out of the way. I would like to thank our God, our Redeemer, our Savior for the great things he's done for us, for allowing me to be here today. Um, it's been exactly six or seven months since I've been here. I was virtual, and now I'm so glad that I am with you guys in person. All right. So, and also, I would like to thank my good friend, my sister, Farleen. Um, for all those of you who heard that I called her fake um, in January, <laughs> I wasn't lying. But, <laughs> all right, so thank you for having me here today. And your beloved pastor, a friend of mine. Now, he says that we, were, we always worship together. Yes, we're always leading worship together. And as a matter of fact, I praise God for his ministry because through his ministry, I am now able to, to preach. All right, he was the first one to call me to preach at his church back when he was at Peniel. So I am, I'm beyond, I am beyond grateful for this man. And my good sister, Rose, right here, with, um, whom I love, you know, our beloved praise, uh, praise team. So you guys are amazing. Um, I have also, I have family here, so I am home, all right? The Lickon family, I recently found out that we are related somehow. But we'll talk about that after. <laughs> all right, let's talk about it after. So without any further ado, um, let us dive into our word. Evel Morde Aflam. Uh, let's do, dive into our word today. If you have your Bible with you, please join me in the book of Psalm. Now, one thing that, um, that I like is that we keep our Bibles open. So in case a preacher lied to you, you could be like, nah, it ain't here. It ain't here, preacher. So keep your Bibles open, whether you have your smartphone, your dumb phone on you, pull it out as we uh, read in the book of Psalm. 
Let me know when you got it. Let me know when you got it. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold up, preacher. It's like 25 of y'all don't got it. That's crazy. And we'd like to salute um, our beloved sister, um, um, Dr. Re- um, Batami's wife. Uh, so God bless you. Thank you for being here. So open your Bibles to the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 1. It reads like this. Uh, let us read from the um, New King, New International, International Version, or rather the LSV. Um, All the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in the mockers. Aye, right, that's it. That's it. Uh, if we have a title that I would like to place on this text today, it would be Keep Growing. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? You guys are a little quiet. The title of our message today is Keep Growing. What's the title, church? Keep growing. We got some growing to do. We got some growing to do. It is now 1247. We won't be long. Let us pray. Immortal God, we thank you, God. We thank you, Alpha. We thank you, Omega. We thank you, Jehovah, Rapha, Jehovah, Jireh, for who you are in our lives. God, as the, at this time, we're asking you to please come on by here, God. We have sang some beautiful songs, God. We have worshiped. We have called upon your name. We have asked for healing for Sister Margaret, God. And now, God, we are waiting for a word from you. Please let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my God, my Redeemer. And let everybody say. Amen. Keep growing. In public health, we learn about what is known as the social determinants of health. Social determinants, de- determinants of health are conditions in which the environment affects us. You know, so the environment as- um, affects a person's health outcomes and overall um, quality of life. Now, church, allow me to share some of them with you. These qualities of life are, you know, what we call health care, you know, access to health care. When we talk about Medicaid, we talk about um, Medicare, and we, you know, folks who don't have access to, to, um, to health care, um, the health care system, or Medicaid, rather, um, they tend to struggle mentally. Now, imagine this, right? So you're looking for help. You, you go to the hospital, and they tell you, like, beloved, you need me, like, you know, $30,000. Now, if you don't have Medicaid, if you don't have um, any insurance, what's going to happen? Now, you're going to, I'm not going to say struggle, but you're going you're gonna, to, you have some questions to ask. Now, how am I supposed to pay this bill? How am I going to make it out? So now, this brings some kind of stress on you. You know, the bills, you know, the house bills, and so, they all bring some kind of stress in you. Um, we also have education. No, the difference between someone with a degree and someone without a degree, the this difference between someone with a trade and someone without a trade, this difference with someone who um, has their, uh, their, their um, high school diploma and someone who does not have their high school diploma. So there's a major difference, and a lot of times we tend to question ourselves. We tend to question our mental health. We also tend to question God, like, God, why did this happen to me? Why did I not make it far? Uh, we're going somewhere with this. We're going somewhere. Social and community context, you know, these things, they play into um, – in our lives, economic st- stability, and also, beloved, what we're going, going to focus on is neighborhood and built environment. All right, so we hear it all the time, and we say it all the time as well. Men is the product of what? Yeah, not talking to men is the product of what? So, in conditions, in other words, our environment, environment, they affect our mental health. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? So our environment, they affect our mental health. Beloved, um, our environment can make us, and it it can also break us. Um, Our environment can bring um, serenity, and it can also bring anxiety. So you have to be careful. It can make you cheerful, but hang around the wrong folks, that that can bring you what's called depression. Um, For my folks who speak French, it says, Dis-moi qui tu fréquentes, et je te dirai qui qui tu es. I'm going to say it again. Dis-moi qui tu es. What I'm trying to tell you is that you've got to be careful and aware of your company. See, 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 you, you have to be careful who you keep around. Not every folks can be around. I love you, but I've got to bounce back sometimes. I, we can always be, we can always hang out because, see, my mental health depends on this. So I've got to be careful who I keep around. And a man is known by the company he keeps. Church, if there's one thing that um, we we lack in, it's what's called spiritual communities. Um, In psychology, we learn about Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs. The third one, if you you, you pay attention to it, the third one is that in, in the hierarchy is the need of love and belonging. If you look into it, you'll notice, if you pay attention, you'll notice that the church is part of it. The church plays a major part in someone's psychological health. 
See, the church is a transformative place where you come in, you come in with all your anxieties, your depression, and you come in and lay them down. See, even Jesus himself, he encourages us to bring our burdens and lay them at his feet. I'm going somewhere with this. In other words, in other words, in other words, when you walk into this community, when you walk into this tabernacle, why Jesus calls the house of prayer and healing. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Where are Shiloh? Where are Shiloh? So I got to bring some Hebrew here right, 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 right quick. Shiloh means a gift from God, a peaceful one. So when I leave Shiloh, I will not walk out the same way I came in. See, I've got to come to Shiloh with all my issues, and I want to walk out of Shiloh peaceful and peacefully. I've got to come to Shiloh knowing, you know, feeling like nothing is, is possible, nothing is working now. But when I walk out, I've got to shout that I have met God because this is the house of tranquility. It is a special gift from God. Uh, no, 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 beloved, you have to entertain my, my audacity real quick uh, and allow me to submit this to you. It hurts. When God's children are hurting. It hurts God when you and I were going through some struggles. See, and this season of change, you know, the, the, the theme for today is a season of change. And this season of change, we've got to understand, we've got to go back to understanding that we are all the same in God's sight. See, you and I, we ain't no different. Whether I got a degree or not, we ain't no different. Whether I can pray louder than somebody else, we ain't no different because we serve the same God. So, 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 so the church hurts. The church hurts. They have to stop. You, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You know, you didn't hear me. So the church hurts. They've got to stop. It hurts God when the church causes some hurt. See, when the church causes hurts, it doesn't hurt God. It doesn't hurt us first. It hurts God to see his children going through some things that he did not plan for. Parents, uh, parents, no, 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 I'm not no parents yet. I'm not no parent yet. I'm still, I'm still young. I'm still young. But uh, allow me to encourage you today by letting you know that you need to make sure you have a spiritual connection with your child or children. Can I submit that again? Can I submit that again? Make sure you have a spiritual connection with your child. Now, if you don't do it, the world will do it for you. Society will do, do you that favor with no issue. So you ought to have a spiritual connection. Child, ha, 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 what, did, what did you think of church today? Let us talk about God. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about your mental health. And that we'll bring, we'll bring that care to you as a friend. And God is able to do the rest. Make sure you have a spiritual connection with your friend. What I'm trying to say is that there is blessing in being connected with God. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Are you with me? There is blessing in being connected with God. There is bless, also blessing in walking away when you know you don't belong somewhere. See, just because I fit somewhere, that doesn't mean that's where I belong. Just because we're cool, that don't mean we always got to hang out all the time. I've got to set some boundaries. I've got to set some spiritual boundaries. Because my spiritual life depends on it. Now, uh, back, back to the Bible, back to the Bible. Someone opens with a benediction and a godly message. Now, that should encourage your soul because it is the same as Matthew 5, verse 13. It is the same as the Beatitudes. The word blessing right here is to be fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. Let me say that again. The word blessing here used by, by, by the psalmist is, no, to, to, is to be fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. Ladies and gentlemen... Now, 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 ladies, I, I know y'all y'all get excited about birthdays. So that get my let birthday on on birthday on feel. I always have Y'all know how it is. Oh, you miss my birthday, right? If you are to, if you were to miss a woman's birthday, if you're married, you better sleep out or let God lead you into. I'm not married yet, but you better lead, let God lead you into that house. Now, as a matter of fact, I have a good friend of mine, my my best friend actually. Um, I miss, I miss her birthday because it just got, I was busy throughout the week. I was busy, and I missed it. Because of that, I did not get a birthday, you know, shout out, you know, for my birthday. <laughs> Patty. <laughs> Patty. I did not get no birthday shout out. I didn't get a, hey, happy birthday to my best friend. I, I, none of that. Because I miss her birthday. Now, here's the thing. See, it's, because it's, it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful day for for. All of us, but for y'all ladies, you know, such a beautiful day. But at the same token, you're just happy that you're growing. 
You're just happy that to see another year. Especially when you hit 21. I hope now no one does anything when they're, they turn 21. But especially when you turn 21, like this is the year. Beloved, let me submit this to you. You ought to be as excited about your spiritual growth the same way you're excited about your birthday. See, 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 it's not enough to be physically grown when you're still immature. When deep inside, you and I, we don't have a connection with God. See, we need that connection with God. I ain't perfect, but so, you see, all you need to do, all you need to do is when you're going through your struggles, you know that you can always go back to God. See, I, one thing I always say, one thing I always say is this. I need somebody in my life who when things are not going well, you're not going behind my back to talk about me, talk to somebody about me. But as a matter of fact, instead what you're going to do is you're going to talk to God about me. Talk to God about me. That, that, that's all I need. So you ought to be as excited about your spiritual growth the same way you're excited about your birthday. And the older we get, you and I must understand that you cannot grow in toxic situations. Uh, I, a lot of us, um, the reason why we have trouble growing is because, watch this, watch this, it's because we try to grow in dry land. Now, if I may talk to my Haitians, my Haitians, I'm going to land up after I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, so one thing that, um, one thing that they always do, they always got to, you know, put water in order for things to grow. They always have to water things. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm into a lot of things that don't make sense. Now, if I, if I were to break down my entire life to you, it would take me years. It would take me a, lot, a long time. Uh, I'm into, I, I work in maintenance. I work at a hotel as a maintenance worker. And I, I also, I'm in, the, I'm in EMT as well, so I do a lot of things. But the thing that I love about um, maintenance, you know, the thing I love about, you know, landscaping, exactly. Let's focus on landscaping. Is that I love to see the grass grow. Because when the grass is growing, that brings satisfaction. I don't know. I, my family, I collected money from everybody in my house when we first moved to Middle Island. Collected money from everybody in my house so I could go buy what's called sod. That's, that's grass, you know. You just go, I went, I went somewhere, took a Home Depot truck, and, you know, put some stem sod in there. Now, I, I planted my own sods. I wanted to do it myself. But when I got there, I, I had to ask them a question because they're professionals. I'm like, listen, how do I, how do I make this grow? No, rapidly. I need some good success in this. One thing he told me is this. You need to water it three times a day. I don't got time for that. I got a, I got a nine to five. I got a job. <laughs> what are we doing? I, I, I got to work, right? So how am I supposed to water this three times a day? If I were through to 1130, then what about these times? Like, is it going to die? But beloved, what I did was some days I had to call out of work. <laughs> Some days I'm like, I want my grass to grow, so I've got to call out of work. Here's what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to be, you need to be surrounded by some folks who are dedicated to help you grow. You need to be surrounded by some folks who, when they see you being successful, they don't go behind your back to talk about you, but they clap for you. They applaud you for your success. They applaud you because you are growing. Because, see, here's the, here's the thing. If Sister Rose grow, I am growing as well. Because we're serving the same God who promises us that he has some great things for us. So here's the thing. I can't talk smack about her. Instead, I'm going to get excited for her. See, 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 if we have some great musicians in here, I can get, I can get jealous about the musicians because I can't play. But here's the thing. We can all all praise God together. This is what we call growth. Somebody say growth. Somebody, somebody say growth. Uh, uh, um, see, we can't grow in toxic situations. Um, we, a lot of times we try to grow in relationships that bring the beast out of us. Instead of allowing God's will and favor to dwell in us. See, uh, you have folks who are always pissing you off. I love you, but you're always pissing me off. But I'm going to stick around anyways, though. I'm going to stick around. See, we often miss out on God's blessings when we get in situations that God is trying to pull us out of. See, but, but here's one thing that I feel like we love doing, we love doing, is we, we keep lying to ourselves. Anybody, any, any witness in here? Any witness in here? There you go. We keep lying to ourselves, right? Here's what we tell, you know, we make ourselves believe that we can change certain situations on our own. See, it done got toxic. It done got tragic. But you still believe, I can change that. Watch this, watch this, watch this. We use words like this. I can change them. You're, you're not with me. You're not with me. I, I can change them. Um, they've been through so much. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They've been through a lot. <laughs> you know, it doesn't even matter how they treat me as long as they stick around and they love me. 
you know. Doesn't matter how toxic it gets, as long as they're still around, I, I can still feel feel their warmth, even though sometimes they get cold. It's okay. I can still. It, it doesn't matter. And here's what ends up happening. Here's the result of that. We find ourselves two, three, four, and five years hanging in dry lands. In other words, you're not growing. There is absolutely no sign of growth. Now, I've come all the way from, Long, from Middle Island, Long Island, to help you free yourself from this shackle by telling you that God's desire is for you and myself to grow. God's desire is for us to prosper. It is not for you to get stuck in unnecessary situations. It is not, it is, it is not for us to get stuck in un, un, unnecessary stress. Your happiness, your happiness matters to God. You ought to get you to, you're too get excited. Just think about how happy God gets when you're happy. And think about how sad he gets when you keep walking away from him. When you keep disconnecting yourself from him. When you keep telling him, man, God, I, I got you tomorrow, God. I got you, I got you. But let me love them real quick. But God keeps on waiting. And sometimes he even comes with the Holy Spirit trying to get us out of certain situations. But because we're so comfortable, because we love where we are, that we don't even want to walk out of it. Because I've got so comfortable. We, we have a great past, God. I love them so, so much, God. I can't let that go. But God is constantly telling you, I need you to come back to me. I miss you. There's a blessing awaiting from you. It's not God is not, he's not trying to release it. It's just that you're not putting yourself in a position to receive it. You're not with me. You're not with me. You're not with me. It's not God is not trying to release it. But it's just that you and I, we do not place ourselves in a position to receive it. Your happiness matters to him. The psalmist continues. He proceeds to say, blessed is the man, uh, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the, in the sit of, of the sinners or join the mockers. Beloved, will not belong. I promise you will not belong. Now, I just want to submit three verbs in three categories to you, and I will let you go home. It says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Right, right? So, the first one, the first verb is to walk. Somebody say walk. Uh, the first verse is, is to walk um, in the path of the wicked. Now, now that walking, it, it simply means that when they're doing it, I'm okay with doing it as well. Um, that walking means that whenever they try to push me to do something that I'm not supposed to be doing. See, understand some other thing. It all starts with a thought. Are you with me? Are you with me? It all starts with a thought. Now, listen, think about it. It can't be that bad. There's no way, there's no, God's not going to get mad at you. It's your first time sinning. How, how bad could it possibly be? So now what, what, what you start doing is you start to consider it. All right, all right. So they start putting the thought. Now you start to consider what they're doing. This is what the, 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 the psalmist means by blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Someone who's doing wrong, but I still applaud them. That is wicked. And here's the, here's the thing. Um, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, it says this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I will hear them from heaven and I will what? And I will heal their limbs. Here's the thing. God is not calling you wicked, but he's saying that there are some wicked ways that you ought to be careful to not be walking into. But whose delight is in the Lord of God. Wait, 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 wait. We, got, we, got some, we got some more, we got some more. Another verb is, the other verb is to stand. Now, because now you start walking, you start, you start to stand. You start to consider what they're doing. You start, and now, the, and the third one is to join them. See, it all starts with a, with a thought. It gets down to, to stand with them. Now, you start to join them in what they're doing. Beloved, a lot of times the church starts to join in what they're doing. Uh, but the Bible tells me that whose delight is in the law of the Lord. See, I, I get excited. I get excited. But, but, you know, one thing that we always say is the Bible is boring. The Bible is so boring. Like, you know, how do you even understand this? But here's the thing. The Bible is not meant to entertain you. The Bible is meant to encourage you. See, when our faith is down, you can always go back to God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the Bible. See, when you talk about old taste and see that the Lord is good, that's the Bible. There are so many beautiful things in the Bible. If you take the time not to just read the Bible, but to ask God to help me understand the Bible, to surround me with some folks that will allow to help me read the Bible, then there comes your growth. 
I can't be around folks that that's not encouraging me to, to read the Bible. No, 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 no. I can't be around folks that when I'm down in self, tell me, let's pray. You're, oh, you're, you're, you're pushing me to do something else. I've got to be careful because my spiritual life depends on it. I can't always, it's, it can't always be about gossiping. It can't always be about gossiping. Tell me about God. Tell me how my faith can be encouraged. Tell me about God. Beloved, um, one scripture that, that, I, that I fell in love with, I fell in love with, it is, um, it is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. It reads like this. When I was a child, if you, I would like for you to join me in there. I would like for you, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 13, verse 11. It reads like this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. What else, what else? I reasoned. When I became a man or a woman, I did away with childish things. When I was a child, I spoke as a child or talked as a child. I thought like a child. And I even resent as a child. Now, I, 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 want, to, I want to get into the, into the Greek. I want to get into the Greek. Um, um, see, every now and then you, are, you have to let people know that it's time for me to grow. See, the same way we're like, oh, I got to go. It's time for me to grow. See, here's the thing. It takes spiritual maturity for you to understand when it's time to walk away. When I can't keep doing what we used to do. See, a lot of us, we expect different results, but we keep doing the same thing over and over again. And proof, proof of growth is found in verse 11. See, when, when, when the apostle says, I spoke as a child, what he is saying is, the, 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 the Greek term for this is lego. Church said lego. It is to utter. In other words, I've got to be careful with the words that come out of my mouth. See, being that I am grown, I can't speak how I used to speak anymore. So I started doing some. I am 24 years old, by the way. Um, I started doing something where um, every year from my birthday, I think of something that needs to be changed in my life. You know, new year, new me. My new year starts when, you know, whenever, you know, my birthday is. So to utter, I've got to be careful that the same things I used to utter when I was 23, that I'm not uttering them at the age of 24. I've got to grow from being the man I was before to somebody new. To, I need to get to where God wants me to get. But in order for that to happen, I've got to allow him to put his growth hormones in me in order for me to grow. Not only do I need to be careful with what I am saying, Paul also says, I've got to also be careful with what I think. Uh, uh, um. Paul also says that the other word for speaking or to utter is to disclose. Who am I disclosing it with? Who am I sharing this with? See, there's a lot of things that we share with people that we should not be sharing. A lot of us, anybody here ever have some dreams? Are oh, you still with me, church? Are oh, you still with me? Anybody ever have some dreams that you share with the wrong person? <laughs> and instead of encouraging you, why are you thinking of doing that for it? Oh, my God, no. Like, why is that something that you're thinking about? How do you think you're going to succeed in this? I'm not going to tell you to not do it, but. You, you ever, you ever, so Paul is saying it is childish to share your dream with just anybody. What happened to Joseph? He was sharing his dream with some folks, with his brothers actually, that had close-minded. Be careful to not hang around with close-minded folks. Be careful to not share your personal life with close-minded folks. Because that can lead to destruction. I'm going to, I'm going to, I promise you, I, I told you I ain't going to be long, I ain't going to be long, I'm almost done. The other one is to understand. Paul says, I understood as a child. And that he, that, that Greek term is phroneo, church say phroneo. Come on, Nacho, you're not with me, phroneo. It is self-understanding. True growth requires self-understanding. In other words, when I wake up in the mirror, I need to, and when I wake up in the morning, I need to stand in front of that mirror to analyze who I am. See, it's not what you say about me, but it's also what I think about myself. See, what I think, see, the way I speak of myself matters to God. Because here's the thing, our mental health, it affects our worship. 
Imagine the whole week. Yeah, you was in a bad mood. Like somebody done pissed you off. You wanted to flip them something. Real, like there's something that you wanted to. Somebody done pissed you off. But when you go back, man, I am better than this. Ain't no way I'm going to let this person ruin me. But if you keep that same energy, you don't, go, you don't get into your, uh, some kind of self-understanding. You will come to church and feel like the preacher did not say anything that matters to you. You will feel like the praise team, man, the praise team was trash. Why? Because of lack of self-understanding. And, and for Neo, and not only, not only is it um, you know, lack of self-understanding, you know, how we see ourselves. It was also used for wealth. In other words, y'all know what wealth is. You know, not only that, but, you know, it's also a, a, a mental state, you know, a mindset as well, right? Wealth is also a mindset. No, no, no. But it was attached to financial wealth. So if you have financial, like if you have a million dollars, you know, like that's guap. Like, you know you got it. So here's the thing. Paul is saying that you have to put a value on yourself. Come on, you're not talking to me. 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 See, see, fronel means that. I've got to put value on myself. How did it say, know your self-worth and do what? Add tax to it. <laughs> That's what it is. Know your self-worth and add tax to it. And Paul is saying that you need to put some weight on your name. I can't let you mess with my last name like that. I can't let you mess with, with me just like that. I've got to know who I am and put what? Put weight on it. The last one is, I thought as a child. And the, the term for that is legixomai. Church says legixomai. Come on, church. Legixomai. It is also to look at something and put weight on it and assign value to it. Beloved, when you want to grow, Hebrew 5 verse 12 tells us that when you, want, you and I want to grow, something has to mature. Um, there are some expectations of maturity. Something has to mature. I can't keep doing the same thing and expect the same result. Beloved, when you want to grow, you ought to stay rooted in God. Um, it says uh, that person, uh, but the light is in the, in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruit. And each season, their leaves never wither, and they, and they prosper in all they do. Here's what gets me excited. Here's what gets me excited. Is that whenever I decide to allow God to, uh, to, to, to help me grow, whenever I decide to allow God to help me grow, what ends up happening is I am able to grow in each and every season. As a matter of fact, whether it's my season or not my season, I can always expect by faith for God to change the situation. See, whether it's not my season of healing, because I am mature in God, by faith, I can trust God to do something even when I don't see him doing it. I can always, even though I can trace it, I can always, I can always by faith understand that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you and I can think or even ask for it. But you have to stay planted by the stream of water. Now, it's not talking about just regular water. It is also talking about, it's talking about Jesus Christ, the, Jesus Christ, the living water. Every now and then we get thirsty. Every now and then we get to, into some, some situations that don't work out, that are just not working out. See, instead of us just doing anything, I need you to bring me closer to Christ. I need you to encourage my faith and bring me closer to Christ. And this is saying that if we, you and I, we stay dwelling by the stream of water, we can grow in season, we can grow within, in, out of season. Our business will grow, our finances will grow. See, even your mindset will grow, your family will grow because you stay put, you stay planted. I love Michael Todd in, in, in this one series where he, he talked about being buried and also being, um, being planted, you know, the difference between being, being buried and planted. And a lot of times, he even said that, you know, a lot of times you and I, we are buried and not planted. You've got to be careful. Church, church, my church leaders, we have to be careful that we don't bring the youth in the church just to keep them buried. Because something that's buried cannot grow. But when you are planted, there's enough oxygen to come into you. There's life in you. See, let me tell you something. Do not bury your gift, but plant them in the living water, which is Jesus Christ himself. Build yourself a connection with God, for everything else will pass. But the word of God ain't going nowhere. Stay dwelling, stay put in God. In, in God. Stay, grow in God and grow with God. That's all we got to do. 
grow with God and grow in God. I almost, I almost, I almost, I promise, I almost, I almost, I'm stay rooted, stay rooted, stay rooted, church. We, we ought to stay rooted. We ought to stay rooted. The problem with these folks that, that, that we hang out is that they talk about mockers, folks who, who instead of, you know, supporting me, folks who instead of trying to let me know that God is good, they instead bring me down. You know, the Bible talks about all these things. But I've come back to let you know, you've got to get out of your own way if you want to grow. See, not only are you saying, I got to grow, but you have to understand that the gift in you, you've got to let it grow. You, you, you know what the problem is? Um, a lot of times we stay in our own way. We limit ourselves. We limit ourselves so much. I can't do this. How am I going to succeed? I, I can't do this. And we get in our own way. And one thing that hinders us from growing, it's you your past, and them. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Are you with me? The things that, keep, that hold us from growing, it's you, ourselves, our own selves. We hold ourselves from, from growing. The negativities we talk on ourselves, you know, that I can't do it. I can't keep going to school. I can't, I can't. It's always I cannot. It's never I must do it. That I got this. In Jesus' name, I will succeed. We never talk these things on, on, on ourselves. And here's the thing. You and I, another thing that keeps us growing is them, T-H-E-M, them. Ah, man, God, I can't keep going because I don't want to disappoint them. If I keep on going to school and they don't go to school, uh, I, I, will, I, I can't make them happy. It's, we're always walking in the land of them. Church, say them. We, we say, God wants us to go somewhere. God, I can't go there because um, my friends would think that I'm a church girl, I'm a church dude, and I, I got, I've got to please. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, um, I would love to be part of the choir, but if they hear me sing, I, it will not make them happy. When will you stop living in the land of them, but instead living by the stream of water? As a deer pants for stream of water, so my soul longs for you. God, I am thirsty. See, I'm not thirsty for approval. I'm not thirsty for approval. I'm not thirsty for anyone to like me. You like me, dope. You don't like me, you better take that to the Lord in prayer. I don't know about that. But one thing is, I am thirsty for God. I am thirsty for a word of affirmation. Like, come to me correct or don't come to me at all. I've got to walk away from toxic situations. See, you're not helping me grow. I, I got to grow. I got to grow. I've got to walk away. This is my season of change. And each and every one of us, we need to declare in our, on ourselves that I've got to grow. When you wake up in the morning, in Jesus' name, I've got to what? The Israelites were, uh, this, is, this is my last one. This is my last one. I promise you. I promise you. Um, the, the Israelites, they, take my time, you said? Oh, I thought I heard that. Um, the Israelites, beloved, they, 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 they were um, in Egypt. Y'all know the story, you know, many years, you know, in, 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 in captivity. And at some point, God told Moses, Moses, I need you to go to Pharaoh. All right? Moses, I, you got to go to Pharaoh. When you get to Pharaoh, tell him, I need to do what? Let, you need to do what? Y'all know, know y'all scriptures. Let my people do what? Why? Because his people were in captivity. And he even said that, I heard the cry of my people. I know they're hurting. I know when they're not doing well. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus even says, I know my, my sheep and, and I know their cries. Beloved, what gets me excited is that God knows my cry. See, even though there's like, you know, 50 or hundreds of us here, whatever the number is, um, God still knows bourbons. He knows, it, it's to the point where like, God even says that the hair on our head are numbered. Then I count it. Then I count it. Even the wig, God knows each. Let me stop playing. Um, the number, the head on our, hair on our heads are all numbered. If they're counted, I could be like one, two, three, four, five. But because they're numbered, I will know which one falls. I will know which one of my children is not doing well. So God told Moses, go to Pharaoh. Tell that boy to let my people go. Beloved, I want to bring it to today's time. Um, today's August what? August 6, 2022. Um, God wants to tell the church to let his people grow. There are some youth here at Shiloh that needs to grow. There are some youth within the GNYC that needs to 
grow. Once again, keeping them buried is not doing them any good. Any, any good. Uh, but allowing them to serve God, allowing them to know God for themselves, that's growth. Allowing, introducing, introduce them to the God that you never heard about. Introduce them to the God of mercy. Introduce them to the God of favor. Introduce them to the God that's not always mad at them, but a God that was always here and ready to supply all their needs according to his riches and glory. God is telling somebody, not only do you have to grow, not only do you need to let your gift grow, but the church, you've got to let my people grow. I don't know if at some point you, you, were, you, you find it so cool to, to speak on, on God's people, to even curse people out. Because a lot of times our behavior in the church is not, is not what God intended for, for his children. You know, the, the church was, was meant for me to come in as a house of prayer. It is supposed to be a transformative place. When I come to the church, I need to feel peace. But if you're going to keep talking about me, how do you expect me to grow? God is telling somebody today to let my people grow. I've got to grow. I've got to grow. If it ain't working out, I've got to walk out. If it ain't working out, I've got to walk out. I want to grow. With you or without you, I'm still growing. Whether you like it or not, I'm still growing. Because that's what God wants for us. God did not give us a spirit of what? Spirit of fear, right? So why am I fearing success? You know, we all hear about the phobia for fear. I don't even know it. But, you know, we have the phobia of, you know, of, of fear. Why is that a thing when I serve God? Like, why does that even matter to me where, that you don't like me, that you don't appreciate me when I serve God? All I got to do, I, and I love this line from the movie Fences, all I've got to do is make sure I do right by you. That I, I still love you. Jesus even says, that, that, that's growth right there, that's growth right there. And I promise you, I'm, I'm about to be done, about to be done. Jesus even says this, love them. <laughs> now, that, 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 that was growth right there. The ones that smacked me on that cross... When I ask them for water, they give me, they give me vinegar. Love them. Peter, I need you to feed my sheep. Um, and God, Jesus even says that there are some, um, some sheep that are not yet home. I still got to love them. That's growth. You talk about me, I still love you. David says, thy words have I hid in my heart that I may not sing against thee. Beloved, there's blessing. And walking with God. It is not simply to claim to be SVA, to claim to be here every Saturday doing whatever you do in church. But there is blessing in walking with God. Because a lot of times we're, we're, we're in church but we're not in God. So we've got to be careful with that. I must say it again. We're in church but we're not in God. And that impedes our growth. As I close today, I would like to encourage each and every one of us. Walk away from the path of wickedness. This ain't what God wants for you. I know you don't understand what he's doing. Sometimes God has a, a way of moving. And here, let me encourage your faith. The reason why God moves the way he moves, you know, that you don't understand what he's doing, it's simply because if you know what he's doing, you will stop him from doing it. God wants to give, give you that promotion, but you don't see it coming. So you start, you start complaining. But if you were to see it coming, you will start telling everybody about what God is doing. And what? They're going to start to change your mind about it. God, God wants me to succeed. Oh, no, he don't. I'm going to make sure you don't succeed. But God is telling you today that he wants you to grow. God wants us to grow. God does not want us to stay in the situation that we are. He does not want us to stay stagnant. See, stagnance, stagnance is one thing that holds us back a lot. Comparisons is the one thing that, 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 that holds us back a lot. Uh, why can't I be like them? Why can't I talk like them? Why can't I sing like them? Why can't, couldn't God do me like them? Why couldn't he create me like them? And we remain in the same position. I got to grow. Is there anybody in here, my young folks, this is your season of change. God wants you to change. God wants to transform you. God wants to remove anything. I ain't perfect. I ain't got it all figured out. I'm just leaning on God. Right now, my life is all about God. I ain't got nothing to do because there are certain things I cannot handle them. And if I can't handle them, they ain't none of my business. They're none of my business. I've got to let God handle them. And all I have to do is remain submissive. Just let him be God. Let God be God in our lives. Is there anybody? You don't got to get up. You don't got to raise your hand. But I want to encourage somebody in here who is dealing with some atrocious moments in their lives when their self-esteem is being crushed. You wake up in the morning, depression is right at your door, ready to go in. 
You wake up in the morning, anxiety is not doing you well. Um, your mental health is crushed. I've come to let you know that the God that you serve is Jehovah Jireh, who is a provider. He's able to make you whole. He's able to heal you. He's able to change you from who you were before. This is your season of change. This is your season of completion. God can do it. If he did it before, he will do it again. If he could heal somebody else, what makes you think as he's walking by your house, as he's walking by you, as he's walking around 92nd Street right now or Avenue, whatever it is, that he cannot stop by Shiloh to bring healing to to bring deliverance to. Beloved, God wants you to grow. But I want to close with this question. Are you growing? Are you willing to grow? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Immortal God, we want to grow. God, we thank you for the plans, the great plans you have for us. We thank you for not giving up on us even when we did not deserve your presence. We thank you for never walking away from us even after we've done wrong, even after our iniquities, God. God, we need you today to bring growth at Shiloh. We need you to stop by this water and trouble the water, God, because there's healing in this water, God. We need you, God, to stop by here at Shiloh and bring peace today, God. We to grow, God. We want to pray. We want to, to, to go somewhere. We want to be, to be successful, God. We want to succeed. We want what you want for us. Nevertheless, not our will, but yours be done. Bless Shiloh, God. Bless us. Renew us. Change us in this season of, season of change. Change our character, God. Change how we think about ourselves. Change how we speak on ourselves. Change the things that we share that we should not be sharing, God. Change our mindset, God, because that's the seed of growth. If there is any wickedness in us, please remove them and make us whole, make us pure, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, put your hands together for God. In Jesus' name. Benny Swale Ternel. Benny Swale Ternel. Benny Swale Ternel. Amen. Can we say amen again in church? Let's put our hands together again for the, for the word of God. Thank you, my dear brother Doville, you know, for blessing our souls today. May the Lord continue to bless you. One thing, you know, when you were preaching, you know, throughout of your message, and then I remember this word, connection. And then connection, when we have a connection with the Lord, we have the best thing ever. And that's why we are inviting you, church, please make sure we have connection with God. All right? And at this moment, to put an end in our service for today, I would like the, the congregation to stand as the praise team is going to lead us in the final song. Thank you. Ask the congregation to please rise as we sing number 286, Wonderful Words of Life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinless to the love and call, wonderful words. I'm alive, all so freely given, wooing us to have all oh, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words.
some light. Oh, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of light. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of light. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words. Let us bow our heads for the benediction. At this time, O oh God, may your peace, your love, and your mercy be upon us forever and ever, we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, let the church sing, amen. Come on, say let the church. Let the church say. And we just want to thank everyone who comes to participate with us today. We, are so, we, were, we were so excited to see them among us. And then we'll give you another rendezvous for next Saturday. And may the Lord continue to bless you. And happy Sabbath. Thank you for being here with us. Montagno déjà te placé. Montagno, déjà déplacé. Montagno, déjà déplacé. C'est par l'esprit du le Seigneur. Montagno, déjà déplacé.